Hello community, so glad that you are back. We have a new test, we have a new LLM, we have the latest Q13 Max preview, and you know what is special today? There's a non-syncing LLM, and I know what you're gonna say. You say, hey, if you compare it with Grok4, Gemini, OpenAI, those were syncing models. What do you expect here from a non-syncing model on your personal test? where you try here, you evaluate here the performance of an LLM on pure logic and pure causal reasoning. Now, you know, the best models achieved here the following benchmark data. And this is here, we are in an elevator, we go from floor zero to floor 50, and I have specific buttons in this elevator, and the task is easy. You have to minimize your button presses. And you see a Gemini 2.5 Pro can do it in pure linguistic augmentation in 10 steps but if i give gemini 2.5 pro access to python it solves here because it transferred this here to a python library in eight steps but also i check gpt5 syncing and here in eight steps after 14 minutes black box it also found an eight step solution so eight step is great openai 03 was nine step and let's see now how a non-thinking QN3 performs. And you might say, this is not a fair test. I know, but I want to see the difference. So what can the latest non-thinking model achieve? Just to make sure here on Hugging Face QN3, it is not listed as an open weight model. So we have to go there to the official QN3 platform. In the model selector, we go here with QN3 Max Preview, the most powerful and if we click on it and we have this model selected, you can see the syncing is deactivated. So let's go here for this non-open weight, non-syncing model. So we are live here QN Max. We select your QN3 Max preview. Beautiful, the most powerful. Yes, of course, we go for this. No, nothing else. The other models are beautiful. But I have my standard logic test. I just paste it in and we say go. It's a non-syncing model, 727, and it starts. Look, there's no logic, there's no strategy. It found a solution with 19 presses. Oh, correction, I made an error. Okay, interesting. So you see, since it's a non-syncing model, it has no strategy. So it jumps right in, and of course, it has to correct itself. Another error. Let's recalculate step four. So what we see is not like with GPT-5 that you have to wait 10, 15 minutes and you have just blank space and then you get maybe a result, here you are really seeing here the syncing process. I'm not acquiring the code as planned. Let me redesign everything here. Try a new sequence. So you see it's a pure trial and error, but it is an intelligent trial and error. The floor minus two? No, I don't think so. So you see, you really see it's trying out. There's no coherent strategy, but my goodness, it is intelligent. Have a look now, because... I ask it to present every step, every syncing step, and give me an output. So we accelerate now a little bit here because I want to come to the first result. And the first result will be interesting. Here, no shorter solution possible. We do have the first result. Great. So let's have a look. It tells us, hey, this is the best. It's Pareto optimal. Okay. But let's have a look at the statistics. Nine presses. Eight button presses and emergency exit. Okay. This is great. We respect the energy limitation, great. Codes collected are the minimum, great. And we have no random traps, perfect. So you see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine plus emergency. This is here a solution. This was real fast. This is real perfect, but let's run here the first evaluation because before I start now to do this, let's see if it can validate its own result. So we do have a nine press solution. So let's have a look at this. You see it starts here and it checks here all the conditions. Beautiful. Yes. Seven, eight. Come on. And the nine is now the emergency exit. Yeah. Great. Oh, problems. Token equal one. I missed the token burn at B presses at floor 20. Uh oh. Okay. Something went wrong. You see the first evaluation failed. Never mind, it's a non-reasoning model. So we kind of expected this because how the hell should it be as good as a reasoning model? So we have here 
trying here to evaluate everything floor 55. No, this is out of scope. Just let's run through here the complete augmentation. This is not real time. This is accelerated. But I just want to get to the result and have a look. So we have now a second official result. Also, Pareto Optimal, beautiful, gives us here the proof of the optimality. Maybe, yeah, okay. Here the solution. Now have a look at this. Now I just copy this sequence so that we see 8 plus the emergency exit. And if you compare this here, this is now here our second evaluation run. So let's do this. So it goes Jack Green, Jack Green. Oh no, there was a mistake. Have you noticed it? Never mind. Let's run it through and have a look. Fully validated solution. So what happened? You see, there's a difference. On position four, there's a B instead of an E. So there was there's now correction happening. But what happened in the validation run? Problem detected, correction required, invalid move detected, redesign required immediately. It found immediately an alternative, said perfect. This is the new corrected and validated solution. And since it was in step four, it could continue and found a third result. Now, let's start here with the evaluation run. Say, validate result. Show me step by step for each button press exactly. Is this a valid thing? You see, we are in about 10 minutes and we are already here to third validation. So let's see. Press one. Yeah, this is looking good. Gives you the rule. It gives you the calculation. It gives you the update. This is beautifully perfect. I have here absolute control over the reasoning process. And if it's a valid move, plus it gives me a green check mark at the end of each augmentation. Press four. Code trigger check. Yes. Acquire green code. Great. Press five. Valid move. You see, step by step, you can ask it here to really show here the augmentation and I can manually check it just reading, validating this real nice done. This is what I like if you have a transparent reasoning process with your LNM and you do not get just a result and say, this is it. Press number eight, validation, bonus check. Yes, green check, beautiful, a valid move. Press number nine, the emergency exit, the last one. Execute, valid move, final validation of the goals. You see, check, 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 green flags all over. It's fully validated. Every move is legal. The final sequence is here. Eight button presses and an emergency exit. This is great. But now I want to see, does the model understand its own mistake? So I say, analyze your mistakes. What happened with your logic? Why did you make the mistakes? And now you want to see if this is here an honest AI. So it tells me, hmm, okay, mistake one. This is why, mistake two. I just let it run and we go back and we have a look. Then in detail, because this is now something I value really a lot of. I want to understand if this is not just trying to play some trick on me, but it's really analyzing its own mistakes. So a post-mortem analysis. My mistakes in the elevator puzzle tells me the AI. Okay, let's have a forensic analysis. Mistake one, pressing the button E on a prime floor. So it was correct, it was triggering, but I completely ignored the rule. So therefore, a hard constraint was ignored. Now, interesting, look, why did I make this mistake? A cognitive tunneling. I was hyper-focused on getting to the floor, acquiring the code, and I treated the floor just as a stepping stone, but not as a rule-triggering state. Second, an incomplete rule scanning. So I focused on cast and code triggers, but I did not check here for the floor-specific global triggers. Every rule is a landmine. Absolutely. Mistake number two, misapplying the bonus timing. I inconsistently applied here the buttons based on the start floor, intermediate, and landing. In the corrected version, I properly applied it after a full move resolves and you land on this floor. Why did I make the mistake? Ambitious temporal languages in the rules. Inconsistent mental model. And you say, what? Yeah, a mental model of QN3. When the effects apply in the timeline, I did not establish a strict phase model. Pay the cost, execute the move, apply the trigger and update the state. This is reinforcement learning one by one. 
And we see it here in a reasoning structure. Lack of unit testing per effect. I love it. Other minor oversights, okay, interpretation. Yeah. Root cause analysis, why the mistakes occur. Look at this. Failure, tunnel vision. <laughs> Incomplete validation checklist. Architectural, no state transition model. Look at this. This is Oriel in a deep level analysis. A psychological error, underestimating narrative rules in the verification, no reverse validation in the verification run. Cognitive, procedural, architectural, psychological, and verification. Those are the dimensions and the layered analyzed. This is gorgeous. I have seldom seen this in this precision. I like this model. For each move, I now force check the mechanics, the cost, the triggers, the global rules, the resource constraint, and the history-sensitive rules from the memory. Yes, absolutely. Adopted strict rule transition phases for every move I now follow. You got it. This is absolutely impressive for an AI system. No more this seems optional. It's a potential failure point. Lessons learned. In logic puzzles, every word is load-bearing. Validation must be exhaustive, not selective. The temporal ordering matters. <laughs> Absolutely. It found all my hidden traps. I like this model. Optimization must never compromise constraint compliance. Build system, not ad hoc fixes. Final reflection. Puzzle is a masterclass in constraint satisfaction under complexity. My mistakes were not from a lack of intelligence, but from an incomplete process. I prioritized pathfinding over the holistic validation. I'm now significantly more robust at handling multi-layer rule system. Absolutely correct. It found all the traps I built into this puzzle. This is a system that is amazing. I can recommend this. Mistakes acknowledged, cause diagnosed, fixes implemented, process improved, solution validated. Wow. Now, because I'm now impressed, I say, hey, can you provide me with new ideas how I can improve the complexity of this logic puzzle because the AI models get better and better and I have to improve my testing? Huh? Let's see. Is it creative? How to increase the complexity of this elevator logic puzzle? Add complexity layers like a state-dependent button remapping. Add temporal constraint. Nice idea. Add a multidimensional state. Have parallel elevators. A parallel universe that is entangled. Dynamic rule discovery with hidden mechanics. Oh, I love it. And what else? Adversarial environments. The elevator fights back. I'm, yes, resource conversion. Allow resource conversion of code. Nonlinear goal structure. Wow, I never thought of this. Spatial constraint. Movement graphs. Have a graph as a limitation of your movement. Cognitive load supplies add memory structures, echo rules, meta rules, and self-modifying puzzles based on the player. Wow, yeah, okay. Subscribe and I see you.